Hello everyone, it's Trina here from There's a Card for That.ca and today I'm going to be making this belated birthday card featuring Lawn Fawn stamps and there's quite a mashup. Um, it's also going to be a double slider surprise card um, but with one slider so a single slider surprise card maybe. Um, also, fun fact, it is International Sloth Day. October the 20th is International Sloth Day and sloths just happen to be my absolute favorite animal because they are so cute. Um, if you have never seen a baby sloth in a onesie, that is something you should Google. I'm not even kidding. It is about the sweetest tiny little thing you will ever see in your entire life. Um, so for the die cutting for this card, I did my die cutting prior to the video because this one this one's kind of long so if you're gonna hang in there till the end which I would love you to do um good on you because I'm not even sure how I'm gonna fill up the next 21 minutes of talking <laughs> but I'm sure I can do it because we all know I like to talk um so I'm using the sloth from Lawn Fawn's hang in there and I had wanted to use um, the little one from Slow, Slow Down and Enjoy, the newest bookmark set. I think it's um, a couple releases ago. And, but I couldn't make it work the way I wanted to. Um, I wanted him facing the camera and of course the whole body picture is him being away from the camera. Now Little Bluebird Stamps has a super cute little sloth in one of their sets. Um, but I didn't use that one either because he's littler than I wanted. Um, there will probably be another card in the next 24 hours with another sloth. But probably not a video for that one. But then again, who even knows. Um, so for my foliage here. I am using the plants from Critters in the Jungle, which is a super old stamp set from Lawn Fawn. Um, I'd used, I'd gotten that, it was probably one of my first stamp sets from them. So dating myself, right? Um, and then I put masks over everything, or thought I did, because we're going to see coming up here real quick what I did not put masks over. And then I'm not a fan of redoing things part of that laziness. So you're going to see how I fix it again with my air quotes that you can't see. Um, so I'm going to just use some regular distress inks here in cracked pistachio, twisted citron, and then I'm going to throw in some evergreen bow and I'm not going to like it. But again, I'm not redoing it. Um, so I'm just sponging around and my original plan was to create like a green halo around the plants and around him and then leave it at that like leave it a little more white so that it just gave the impression of being green but then I didn't like the evergreen bow so I'm trying really hard to cover that up <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't work perfectly, but I mean, honestly, it's a handmade card. And if people are expecting perfection out of all of our cards, like, there's a hallmark down the road. Like, I was on um, on Facebook, and I am part of a couple different stamping groups there, and mostly for inspiration and just sharing what I do and stuff like that. Um, and... Somebody had posted in there about how they were so excited about a really big order of cards that they had gotten for Christmas that they were discounting the person who was buying them. Like immediately, the story that I read, like nobody asked for the discount. Um, so she was like, how much should I discount? And so I told her, like, I wouldn't, I don't. I did in the beginning. I used to discount my cards a whole lot. Um whether it was somebody who had ordered multiple times or somebody who was ordering for the first time or somebody who recommended somebody else or something like that. And it really got to this point where people were like, so I don't get a discount this time. And so finally, I just had to be like, no, because while 
it was super easy for me to put this card together for the 20th time, um, it took a really long time for me to design it because everything's unique, right? Like you can't sell somebody else's design. And so it was really, really frustrating when people are like, well, I'm not paying that for a handmade card. I'm like, okay, well, you can go to Hallmark and you can pay $750 or more. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's, it's really up to us how we value our own work. Um, the cards that I make now, and I mean, it's been six years now, the cards I make now, um, I don't even take special orders anymore. If somebody's like, I want a birthday card for a man, he likes blue. That's about as the extent as it is because I was taking super custom orders for the longest time. And then they'd be like, mm, not exactly what I was looking for. And I would spend days and days going through iteration after iteration for them to buy one card at the end of it. And it was super not worth it anymore. It was more stress than it was worth. And I needed to get back to a place where I was doing this because it's what I love to do. Um, I don't really like making the same card over and over and over again. I really don't. I like making individual cards and I like having new ideas and you know, sharing inspiration and, and things like that. And I had to get back to a place where I was doing it for the love of the cards and the love of the art and the love of the craft instead of making everybody else happy. And I think that's a really important thing for us all to remember is we started this to make ourselves happy, whether it was because you were injured and couldn't work or because you were depressed or because it's just something you needed to do because you moved to a new city and you didn't know anybody. We started for us and I think that is a super important thing to remember. Okay, that rant is over and I'm so sorry. I did not mean to go on that tangent. Um, so I used the same Distress inks for the background and you can see right here as I'm peeling these masks off that uh, I didn't put masks on those back leaves. And whoops, I totally should have. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with my greens and I tried to use really muted tones um, just to give a variety because my background seems pretty bright-ish because that Twisted Citron just really lightens everything up here. And I am a little bit out of the camera. I'm sorry, I was kind of all over the place with this. Um, and so I'm going in with the colors. I'm deciding where I want my darkest shadows. Most of these two colors max. I want my sloth to be what really stands out here. Um, so I was not super concerned about whether or not a whole lot of detail and color went into making the leaves and the plants vibrant because that's not my focus piece. My sloth is my focus piece um, because he is stinking cute. And I think all of the companies need to put out all of the sloths so that I can have them all. <laughs> Which I know probably won't happen, but I can dream, right? I can totally dream about it. Um, so I also used those colors to go over the leaves that I had forgot to mask. Um, I have never had a problem using my Copics over top of Distress Ink or Distress Oxide Ink. Um, I have heard things where it ruins the nibs, same as like when you use it near embossing. Um, it has not been a, a particular issue for me. Uh, maybe I luck out. I don't go over it as much as I would if um, then I would if I were just coloring it completely um, because there's already a base coat, right? Top notch. Um, so I'm just going in over that and then I'm going to take this really light YG03 marker and try and pull that back because I wanted my distress ink background blending to be darker at the bottom. Um, and so that being said, of course, now these leaves are darker to begin with. Um, I'm also going super simple for this branch that he's on right now. Um, just because it's not the start of the show either. It's a prop. It's a prop. And uh, I actually went to the store today, the superstore, because sloths are really starting to become popular. Um, like a lot. 
which for me is fantastic because I was on the sloth bandwagon long before anybody else was on the sloth bandwagon. Like I like sloths before they were cool. (laughs) I should totally have that shirt so I can be that girl. Why not? Right. Um, and I bought myself a sloth that his hands Velcro together and will hug me. And his name is Simon, the motivational sloth. And he is, uh, hanging out in my art room right now. He is able to sit on his own and he's stinking cute. I can't even tell you. And, um, the first thing my daughter wanted was like, Oh, I'm going to make him hug me. And then we're going to go play video games together. And I was like, no, nope. This one is actually for mommy. And the look on her face was like, what exactly do you mean? It is for you. Um, So back to the card. So while I like to use the warm grays because they have the brown undertone for my critters, my warm critters, I like to use the E40s because they kind of have a gray undertone to the brown for my sloth. Um, Because they are, like if you look at a sloth in real life, if you're lucky enough, or on the internet, like the rest of us, um, they're like this weird gray, brown, mousy drab color, which is totally cool because you spend 99% of your time in a tree, you're going to want to blend in, right? (laughs) Um, so there isn't a lot in the way, which you probably saw along the bottom because all of my markers were listed along the bottom. There wasn't a lot in the way of intense Copic coloring here. Like this was all pretty basic. And so I'm putting it back into the Misty, this panel, um, now that it's been stamped and colored and all of those things are done. And I am adding my greeting, which says, sorry, I'm slow, right over top of him. And that just makes me laugh. I just think it's hilarious. It's like when a frog is like, happy birthday. <laughs> like, how is that not so funny? Um, to keep my blacks matching, I wanted to ensure that that panel was completely dry. And then I used the Memento Tuxedo Black ink again. Um, we all know I love Lawn Fawn. And I love Lawn Fawn, their dyes and their stamps and their inks because I've got a lot of them too and their embossing powders which I have not used the new set from that we talked about a couple videos ago last video I'm not sure the rose gold we had talked about that it was last video because that was the you were loved um one from Simon Says Stamp and we had talked about the rose gold from Lawn Fawn because it looks more rose gold e in the bottle And I haven't used it yet. And I know I promised I would. And so I kind of feel bad. But then it was International Sloth Day. And I was like, well, I have to make a sloth card. And I can't use... Well, I could. I could have used rose gold, I guess. But he didn't strike me as like a rose gold type boy. (laughs) Um, But anyway, um, out of all of the interactive dyes from Lawn Fawn, and I do have most of them... um, This one gives me the most trouble. And I don't know if it's because it is, it is intensive. Like you need an entire sheet of paper just to create your mechanism. You need two of the sliders. You need one of the thingy that looks like the side of an eye beam and you need two of the other things. And that's an entire piece of paper. That's a lot of paper, right? Like we're used to, you know, cut it in half, fold it, you're done. There's your paper. Um, And then we've gotten into the layering and then we've gotten into the dimension and then all of these other things. But this one has given me the most trouble. And maybe it's because I'm impatient. Like all of the ones I've made, they've worked out. But I feel very, I don't want to say frustrated. I feel my motivation dipping when I think about making a double surprise slider card um, just because of how long it takes. Like this video sped up is still 21 minutes and I did all of my die cutting prior to filming. (laughs) Um, So this is definitely one of those dies sets that I use when I'm giving away cards 
personally. This is like that extra special thing that I give away when a friend is super sad or when I have to make a belated birthday card because I forgot somebody's birthday. (laughs) Because sometimes I'm a bad person. I have three kids, a full-time job, and I want to do this all the time. (laughs) Like, oh, I don't even sleep as much as I want to do. But um, so I stamped the happy and the birthday from the hang in there stamp set um, with Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And then I used, I think it was cilantro, lawn fawn ink to stamp the belated and the brackets to go in between just to kind of tie it all back together. So I'm putting it all together and I'm using the 1 8 inch score tape and I am making sure that this score tape is pressed right down. <laughs> I had one double slider surprise card where my score tape was not pressed right down and you can only imagine what happened. It popped apart. <laughs> Because why wouldn't it? So I'm like putting it down and then like using my thumb and like maybe you could zoom in. I don't know. Like and see like the white pressure mark underneath my nails. I'm like (laughs) it was so bad. Like I had like a little not really a paper cut but an adhesive backing cut (laughs) along my finger because I'm pressing so hard to make sure that this is down and back and forth with my bone folder. Um, this bone folder is from close to my heart and, um, it's the only bone folder I've ever used. So I really don't know how it compares to anything else. I really like it. doesn't leave marks and it gives me the crease that I'm looking for. So super. Um, if I lose it, I'll probably try a new bone folder, either the Teflon or the Lawn Fawn Teflon. Um, which is most likely, let's, let's all be honest. Um, but I don't feel the need to replace it. It doesn't do anything. It's not supposed to. Um, so I've added all of my adhesive and now I'm butting up those two pocket pieces, maybe together. One's that kind of, it looks like a file folder to me from work where you, like, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and putting that in there and then Um, This is also the very first time I've used a doggy bag, as recommended by Kelly Marie. Um, Normally, I use extra um, stamp packaging. Not really stamp packaging, because I keep them in their packaging. Um, Dye packaging, because those go into the binder, right? Like we've all seen my video on that. Um, And it was harder to get it moving. So I don't know if my bags are like super staticky or whatnot. Um... But once it was moving, it moved way better. Um, so yeah, I paid a dollar fifty for two hundred bags at the dollar store. Cause remember, cheap, <laughs> cheap and lazy. Such a catch. My husband, like luckiest man in the world, right? <laughs> I tell him that all the time, and he just goes, "Okay, honey." <laughs> and then I wander back downstairs and just kind of do my own thing while he's he's upstairs doing his own thing. Um, so here I realized I didn't put a stopper in and I wanted to because I didn't want the top card to actually come out any further than where the greeting was. And because I didn't put anything on the bottom one, I guess I could have probably put one on, on this one as well. Um, it doesn't. So I just have to be super careful. Um, this one is my fifth or sixth slider double slider surprise, but only with one slider. Um, so I think I'm getting more of the hang of it because it wasn't as scary. This pattern paper just happened to be in my stash, um, because I was lazy and I didn't want to pull out any other patterned paper. And I was like, Oh, look at that leaves. It's perfect because I'm going to go with my green and brown bichromatic (laughs) card. (laughs) Too bad there's no day of the week that starts with B. That'd be a fun one, right? And so most of the stuff I am just putting down um, using my dollar store adhesive. Aside from the scork tape, because I know that stuff is mega strong and my dollar store mega strong tape does not come an eighth of an inch. Um, Yeah, dollar store, do it up. Like think about how much money you would save if you switch to dollar dollar store tape runners. And then when you think about how much money you save there, you'd be like, Oh, that is a lot more stamp sets I can buy, right? Right. 
Um, so I popped that up completely on the foam tape from the dollar store. Same rule as last time when we opened it in Happy Everything two videos ago. And uh, yeah, I liked it. I did figure out my lining up issues with the little tab from the that cuts that little notch on the front of that pocket. Um, and yeah, it was starting to move a lot easier. And then I was like, hmm, this is gonna need some bling. <laughs> it's gonna happen. So now, instead of cutting out this part of the video, which I totally thought I did, I'm going through my stash. So you can listen to me talk <laughs> while I do that. And I'm not entirely certain how long this goes on for, but I knew that it did and I totally thought <laughs> I cut this part out. Um, so I do end up settling on enamel dots that are from Recollections, which I don't typically use. Like I kind of went through my enamel dot phase when I got into the Nouveau drops, right? Which didn't even occur to me on this because I could have used Nouveau drops. Um, but I'm using a few different, three different colors, I think, that I thought matched pretty well in here. I had considered that turquoisey teal color on the one that I'm holding right now, but then I was like, mm -mm. You know, that's way too peacock feathers for the what I was going for here. And so I'm just going to play with that some more. And that is basically our video for today. So thank you all so much for watching. And if you made it this far, you rock. You are awesome, awesome people. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up button and comment. I love hearing from every single one of you. Have a great day. Bye.